Hi, good morning. Good morning. Um, so thank you for um, coming on the call, even though you're not feeling well. That's very nice of you. And congratulations with the Steve Harvey interview. It was really, really well done. It was great. Um, so you guys must feel so proud of yourselves right now. So thanks a lot for that as well. Um, my question is about my TDA. I am a teacher in New York City and um, I have about 10 more years left till I retire. So right now I have, um, they let you split up your TDA, your tax deferred annuity into diversified and fixed. So I believe I've always had it um, like 80-20. But I just realized that the diversified has options and I didn't know that. So there's like a bunch of different options. Um, and I just wanted to know like how, like what's the best way to like pick um, between the, the different funds? Um, Cause they have like, like three or four. Um, there's like a sustainable one. There's an international one. Um, like, do I just go by like the history or do you think it's better to just stay with like the one they recommend, which I think is just, they call it like the diversifying. Yeah. Um, it's always good to uh, rule of thumb. You always want to uh, look at rate of returns. That's something that's, um, you know, a cheat code whenever you look at investments, especially like 401k or any type of retirement plan investments. Um, usually like they'll, they'll give you, um, a sheet. And it'll have like, you know, the different funds. So it's like the stable fund, the growth fund, the international mm -hmm. fund. And then they'll have like the um, year to date return, uh, three year return, five year return, 10 year return since its inception. What I like to do is look at the longest possible time frame. So like 10 years or since its inception, sometimes if it's new, um, it might not have a 10 year track record. It might have like a five year or four year track record. But yeah, I try to look at the long, the, the longest possible time frame and see which one has usually performed <clears throat> best for that. Um, usually, like, I haven't really been a big fan on, on international funds. It's me personally, especially, like, in retirement accounts. Over the last, like, 10 years, they haven't really mm -hmm. done as good as, like, just international growth growth funds. So it really just depends on your, on your risk tolerance. But, you know, the growth, growth funds is always going to be something that's going to usually, you know, be the best as far as growth over the course of time. Um, that's like, you know, more large cap companies. And, but the good thing, and I don't know if they changed it, but I know um, a few years ago for the fixed account for the city, how much is the fixed account paying? Like 7% something like that? It's, it's 7.25. When I started, it was 8.5 or 8.25, but then they lowered it to 7.25. So I was able to get the 8%, like the first two or three years I started teaching, but now it's 7.25. And like, I have 10, about 10 more years left. So I have tw um like 20 years already and I have 10 more to go. But um, the, the sustainable index gives a greater return, but it's very new. So it's only like a few years old. So I'm like, is this, should I trust that? And then they also say to like switch it right before you're about to retire to just be in the um, fixed one. So you don't have to worry about like big issues with the market. Yeah, well, the good thing with that is that that's pretty much unheard of to have a fixed account that earns 7%. Um, so that is one thing that, you know, the New York City uh, school department, that's like really like kind of amazing that they have a fixed account, which is like pretty much, you know, no matter what the stock market does, you can earn 7%. So usually a fixed account in this environment is like 1% or less than 1%. So 7% on a fixed account is extremely, extremely good. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't take it all out of there. Definitely would probably leave some money in there just for the safety purposes of it. Like, you know, if, if all, if all else fails, if the stock market crashes, you're guaranteed to get 7%. That's not bad. Obviously, you know, that's not as good as if the stock market goes crazy and you get 30% or 20%, but you know, it's all about diversification. So I would diversify, but I would leave at, at least, at least like by 25% in the fixed account. Cause that's just like a guarantee insurance almost. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Sedalia. All right, Dwight, we're coming to you. Unmute yourself, please. Dwight, you're unmuted. You should be able to speak. All right, looks like he's having difficulties still. So. Sometimes you gotta on the on the Zoom too. You gotta make sure you unmuted on your end too. Like we can unmute you, but make sure you unmuted on your end so we could um. Yeah, he had unmuted himself, but he wasn't speaking. All right, Dwight, we're gonna go to the next person. Natasha, unmute yourself, please. Hello. Um, I have a question about a trust. Who do I go to to start a trust? Where, where do you live in maryland um well i know so the lawyers that we use you know the thing with the law is that it's different like mg he could practice in almost any state for the for the mortgages but lawyers they have to, they have to be licensed in this state so i know we've used to be a lot um i know she's licensed in new york and new jersey i don't know if she's licensed in maryland 
Um, but I think that we 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 had somebody that was licensed in Maryland because I remember I got that question before from somebody from Maryland. But if not, we can definitely you know look. I don't want to give you an answer right now because I don't know off the top of my head. But maybe we could put it in a Facebook group after we you know do some research and, and find some good attorneys. Maybe Magna. Maybe that's something that we can just do. Period. Like you know we can try to like you know highlight some different professionals in different areas of the country, especially the law thing because that's something that you know you depending on what state you live in, you got to really you the lawyer that's that's practicing in your state and that could become a little tricky if you live in states that you know we haven't really featured lawyers in that state so okay yeah the and legal club we have a legal club actually so maybe that's something that the legal club can um can 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 do and one more quick question i remember you were saying it i can i think it was 13 or 14 you should put six thousand in a um ira for your child is that in it it could be an estimate i think y'all were saying um, one million is that six thousand for when she's fourteen, or six thousand every year will equate to the estimate. Yeah. So what I did when I thought I was on a Breakfast Club when I was I said that a while ago. Um, I, I was using an example like if you put six thousand a year in from I believe it was like the example that I gave was like from fourteen to twenty. I believe like from 14 to 20. And I just use the hypothetical, like if it earned 10%, I use like QQQ, which, you know, is averaged more than 10% over the last 20 years. But I'm like, all right, if, if you earn like 10% a year, um, by the time they're 60, then they will have a million dollars. So obviously, you know, it, it, it's, it's not like a hundred percent guarantee because it depends on the market. But that was an example that I had gave just to kind of illustrate the power of investing early. But if you think about it, even if it's not 6,000, whatever you can do, but that's only like four years or, you know, six years of investing. Um, and you know, just by the compounding interest and leaving it in for such a long period of time, then that equals a million dollars without even having to put any more money in after the age of 20. So, you know, that was just an example of, um, you know, the power of compounding interest and you definitely, and I think the example that I actually gave was with the raw fire rate. The raw fire rate is even better for kids because, um, they don't pay any, any taxes on it when they take the money out. So now you set up their, you set up their retirement account when they're young. And, um, you know, by the time they get, they get to retirement, they're going to have, they're going to have, you know, a tremendous amount of money just by the money that was set up for them, you know, while they were teenagers. Um, and that has nothing to do with, you know, their own 401ks or their own IRAs when they get old enough to actually set it up for themselves. So that's definitely a strategy that parents can use for their children. Um, whenever they, they turn, um, legal working age. And, uh, the rule is you could put up, you could put up to, well, 6,000 is the max, but you could put up to whatever the child made. So like if they have a part-time job and let's say they made like $3,000 for the year, um, then you can put up to, you know, $3,000, but it's not unreasonable to, to have $6,000 because it's like, if they work at like CVS or something like that, you know, they make $500 a month, that's, um, $6,000 a year. So $500 a month, that's not really a lot for a part-time job. So, you know, that, and then if you're self-employed, it's even better um, because if you're self-employed and you can hire your child and you can pay them. And when you pay them, uh, you get a tax deduction for the money that you paid up. And then that money you can put into the Roth IRA or an IRA for your child. So that's like a double-edged sword because now you're actually saving money on taxes and your child is working for you. Um, and you get to save money for their retirement. So a lot of different things that you can do with that, but yeah, that's some different ideas for sure. 